Well, the season of The Hobbit, as you know, is upon us. Tomorrow we return at last to Middle Earth with the long-awaited premiere of The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, mm -hmm. the first installment of Peter Jackson's three-movie prequel to The Lord of the Rings. And I had the great privilege of interviewing four of the principal cast members last weekend in New York City. I like visitors as much as the next Hobbit. But I do like to know them before they come. Visit Mr. Baggins, at your service. Hmm? Peter Jackson said that uh, you are one of the most Hobbit-like people that he has ever met. Do you agree? And and why would you say? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> um, I think I know what... I think he means that I like being at home. Yeah. Which would make him king of the Hobbits. Because yeah. he doesn't leave New Zealand to do anything. <laughs> you know, unless, unless at gunpoint. So, um... Yeah, I guess if he thinks I'm a, a hobbit, that's a compliment, because he's a hobbit too. I can't just go running off into the blue. I am a Baggins Wait. of Bag End. When I first met Martin, I, I didn't quite understand where he was going to go with the character. And then he put the costume on and, and sort of started walking around. And he, he brought just a little essence of Martin to that, to, to that character. And um, it's so appealing, it's so amusing. Give him no. the contract. Warren, please. We're off. It's just the usual summary of out-of-pocket expenses, time required, remuneration, funeral arrangements, so forth. Funeral arrangements? You've already played some very iconic characters from literature, Watson, Arthur Dent. So was there a moment, though, with, with Bilbo Baggins where you realized how, how much bigger this all is than, than some of that? Certainly as far as the film is concerned, yes. I'm aware of its size, but what I liked about it was that it also has a way of, when you're doing it, of making you feel like you're just doing, uh, you know, any, it could be any size film, because you, you know, you're not playing the size, you know. You come to work and you don't go, I must be good in this massive film today. You're just thinking, I must be good in this film. I'm playing this uh, um, lovely character who is essentially the audience. One of an unexpected journey's highlights is Bilbo's fateful first encounter with that now iconic slimy underground dweller known as Gollum. What is it, precious? What is it? I think kids are going to enjoy all the excitement, but then they'll have a chance to see some very good acting from Martin Freeman and uh, Andy Serkis, for example, where Bilbo and uh, Gollum meet. Why don't we have a game of riddles? And if it loses, what then? Gollum is back, or should I call him Smeagol? Because perhaps he's a bit more... He's a bit more Smeagol as yeah. well. I mean, interestingly, you know, in the book of The Hobbit, you know, there, there, there is less differentiation between uh, Go Gollum and Smeagol um, that we thought it would be really good to, to for Bilbo to be able to walk into this scene not having to confront just one, you know, strange yeah. creature, but but two. Uh, so, so, and we, so we have some fun with that. We know safe paths for hobbits. Safe paths in the dark. Shut up! I didn't say anything. I wasn't talking to you. And what was your reaction when you first saw the film finally cut together? I was, yeah, I was relieved and very pleased, you know. Because, relieved because you just kind of, you want to get away with it, you know, you, you know, with your bit. I have never used a sword in my life. No, actually, sure, it is a sword. I'm more of a letter opener, really. I was so pleased for Peter. Yeah. Uh, and so grateful to him that, you know, he'd, he'd made us all look good. You have a tale or two to tell when you come back. Can you promise that I will come back? No. And if you do, you will not be the same. Oh, I'm so excited. You've already mm. seen it. Everybody yes. knows I hate to pay you a compliment, but those were really good interviews. Oh, thank you very much. They so were. What about my outfit? I put that together specifically for The Hobbit. The outfit was I, a fail, but the interview... Okay. I'm just kidding. The outfit was good. It was I very never earthy. Wear greens and browns. I put it together yeah. to be like the Shire. It was very Shire-esque. Thank you. I'm talking to Martin Freeman. Did you get a sense of what, what The Hobbit as a piece of literature means well, to him? I actually did ask him about it, and I told him the story of the last time that I read The Hobbit. I had just turned 18, and I left my parents' home, the comfort of the Shire, in a sense, mm -hmm. to go to, uh, to China to live there for a month. To, oh, wow. uh, to do voices for a series of, of educational videos. I didn't yep. mention that part, but I, I mean, I was getting paid, so it was like a journey to bring back riches uh, ah. in a far off land. So, was the there Hobbit, a dragon in China? Uh, it, some people call it the land of the dragon, right? That's so, good you know, there's, yeah. uh, there's a lot of metaphors for me. So, I mentioned that to him, and I said, Is there a metaphor for you? And he said, Well, filming this was much like being Bilbo because he left his home, you know, embodying the character, going on this adventure. You know, it's he's a great obviously going to make some money off this, too. So, yeah, wow. yeah, for him, it did have some important meaning. So. And there was a dragon for him. And, and there was a dragon. <laughs> so stoked to see cool. it. I'm so excited. It's a lot of fun. And